Hello everyone and welcome to a foreigner farming in the Philippines. I just planted this uh, tray of uh, marigolds here. I'm going to have to do a bit of research on how to space them out in the garden. But I do know that they they help with the, the insect problem that we've got. Uh, I just don't know if I could if I should uh, interplant them uh, in the rows or do a perimeter but I'll find out. All the peppers are coming up well. Except this one bunch here. As you can see, just exactly half of this tray did not come up. So the seeds in that packet weren't any good. Half came up and half did not. And the dill here has, uh, none of it has come up and it should be up by now. I'm digging around in here, I'm gonna do a bit of excavation here, see if I can find the seeds and see what the problem is. Well, there's a seed right there and it's just not uh, nothing. Well, I'll give it a couple more days and if nothing happens, then I'll replant that tray in something else. Planted this area right down in there in some uh, okra a few days ago. Hopefully it'll be coming up soon. I'm just going to do a walk around this morning. I'm wearing my tennis shoes and not my boots and it's just started to rain so hopefully I won't end up on my keister. It does get slippery here right when it starts to rain. I'm going to do the final harvest of the corn here, the table corn, and we'll get the freezer bags out and freeze a bunch of it. It was really good. Uh, it's a shame we ran out of butter. We've got to go down and get another couple uh, pounds of butter. And we're actually getting some red peppers in here. Uh, the eggplants are starting to bloom. Let's see if I can make it down the hill here. Ah, made it. <coughs> the eggplants are starting to bloom here, but we're getting a a bug problem in here as well, right there. I've done an inspection and I can't find what's getting and what's getting into them. It's kind of a mystery. Usually the eggplant here is fairly immune to everything. It's one of the few things you can grow here and not have any problems with. And it's not widespread yet. It's just confined to a few little plants right on the other side of that coconut tree. Maybe the coconut tree has something to do with it. Time will tell. I haven't run the pump for a few days, so the water level has come down about three inches in the pond here, but it's supposed to be, you know, I had looked at the weather forecast and so I turned the pump off at night uh, in, in anticipation of this uh, storm we're going to get. It's supposed to be a, a pretty heavy storm tomorrow, uh, kind of so-so today. As you can see it's raining out there, you can see the drops hitting the pond. Next week we're we're getting in we're getting in line we're getting on the list to get the fingerlings and put them in here. Uh, I'm going to take uh, the suggestions that I had and make a, a floating buoy out there to uh, corral the azola and keep it from the banks. It's actually doing uh, better from being left on the banks than the stuff that's in the water. As you can see right there, the uh, azola that's in the soil is actually lush and green. And what's in the water itself is kind of pale green. And the same thing right there. You can see that what has been stranded right there. It looks like it's doing really well. 
and that that back there that's in the water not so much and you can kind of see that entire little ring uh, the azola that's been left high and dry well not dry it's still uh, the capillary action through the mud is still keeping it moist but all along there it's green a little higher on the bank and this and what's in the water is not doing so well so I'm gonna have to try to figure out what the problem is in the water it's probably a pH thing I'll do a little research on that maybe if someone out there has the answer for me they can let me know but the fingerlings uh, I'm hoping you just get on a list uh, at the hatchery and then they let you know when they're available so hopefully sometime next week we'll be able to get some it's Saturday here today so we'll, we'll uh, get in contact with them on Monday and see what we can get done yesterday was kind of a well it was a stressful day um, even though Marcel uh, has been following the doctor's instructions uh, we did take the advice and get a second opinion actually from an actual <coughs> uh, OB Geiner doctor I guess you could say and he said that uh, he lifted her from the bed rest uh, just strictly being in bed but uh, told her to take it easy uh, no heavy lifting, no no strenuous activity, uh, no contact with me, let's put it that way. But we had a bit of a scare yesterday because she had a pretty serious bleeding incident. And so we ended up at the hospital. Uh, I didn't video it because it's kind of personal. And uh, so far, uh, we had an ultrasound done. So far, she's okay. Uh, she was given more medication to stop the bleeding. Uh, we're going to go back in two weeks and have another ultrasound done because uh, the finding from the ultrasound that we had done was not really great. Uh, but I'm not going to share all of that until we have the second ultrasound done. Down here, it's a piggery. Barone, these pigs, uh, Barone, I've instructed Barone to come along and, and cement in all these uh, water pipes because the sows, God bless them, they, uh, at feeding time, they, they can't hardly wait. Well, hello, darling. This is my little gal here. She always talks to me, and I got to pet her. Yeah. How you doing? Yeah. Good pig. <clears throat> they rear up on the pipes and they knock them loose the what they call solvent here what we would call uh, oh what would we call it in the states um, can't remember at the moment the, the pipe blue is not great here uh, it doesn't I don't think in any circumstance it would hold 40 psi and even here because we've got about seven to ten here at the piggery even here it's busting some of the pipes out because it's just not it's just not good quality and you combine that with the sows rearing up on out of their uh, stalls here come feeding time and it's just becoming you know, too much of a problem I'll come down here and the water tanks half empty because we've sprung a leak down here somewhere in the night so Barone is going along and he's doing a good job covering up these pipes we're gonna leave one bear here on the outside because we're gonna run water you know, this next week over to the caretaker house looking good Barone so he's gonna go along and he's gonna cover all these that are uh, on top of the pens he's gonna put a cement mixture See, he pre-wets it. He wets the uh, 
uh, cement. It helps the it helps the cement that he's going to add to it stick a bit better. And the bore over here is this is our second bore. He's our backup bore. He's the brother of the of the one that we've been using, and he's uh, he thinks Barone's feet are kind of tasty. He's turned out to be a pretty good bore, um, but the reason we didn't use him uh, initially was that he was kind of, he just had problems. He was on and off his feed when he was young, but there was no apparent reason. Um, but he got over it, and uh, I think he's actually a, a bit larger in size and a little bit better put together than his brother, the one that we've been using for the breeding. So, uh, the next round, uh, the next round of breeding, if we get any uh, different sows, we'll use him uh, and sell his brother and then sell him and get another couple boars. I don't like inbreeding. I don't like constantly breeding uh, daughters to fathers and nieces to fathers. It just uh, It's commonly done here, but I don't like to do it. You end up with problems down the road from the inbreeding. And boars are expensive, a good boar. Uh, we've got another one over there uh, coming up. And we may just sell uh, the boar we've been using and his brother here and just use the, the boar that we've got coming up. Uh, he has no relation to any of the pigs in here. And he's one of the larger hybrid breeds. He's still just a little fella, but in four or five months when these sows come back in, and two or three months for some of them, uh, when they come back in, uh, we'll use him most likely. He's a pretty good looking fella. And you can see Barone just uh, lays that cement up there. And then he comes back and he uh, smooths it, makes it nice and square. <coughs> Hopefully it'll set up enough uh, before the noontime feeding when they start to rear up on them uh, that they won't uh, destroy the, the solution we're trying to create here. <coughs> it's kind of rainy and drizzly so this is good work for him. He's under the, he's under the roof here and out of the rain. There's a couple little native chickens around here that I'm going to try to catch. As I said before, I want to start. Uh, I want a want a start of native chickens, so that uh, I can start raising and breeding them as well. Because I just I just like them. I like chickens in general, but the older uh, breeds I really like. It's a shame, you know, in the in the states you have hatcheries that you can get dozens, if not hundreds, of different breeds from. And here, I've only seen uh, four. Uh, you can get natives, but usually not through a hatchery because the hens don't lay enough to make, uh, make it commercially viable. But you can get a layer, uh, a broiler, and kabirs. And from hatcheries, those are the, you know, to buy commercially, those are the only ones that you can get here. Uh, I'd love some good Rhode Island Reds or Arster Larps or even Jersey Black Giants, uh, but you just can't get them here. And I don't think it's uh, it's wise or feasible to bring in fertilized eggs. I'm sure if you got caught doing such a thing, it wouldn't go well for you. Seeds are one thing, but something that's going to turn into a live animal, uh, I wouldn't I wouldn't blame the government if they got really upset about that. Uh, Agriculture here is, uh, although it's not nearly so profitable as it is in the West, it is an important part of the economy here. There's the new guys. How's it going, guys? That one guy there is asleep and just about to fall over. He's asleep on his feet. Oh, woke up. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here, darling. I'm not trying to scare you or sneak up on you. 
It's an amazing thing how good this sow is. The more I think about it, the more we're probably going to keep all the females from her. Uh, pigs in general have just been so inbred that the mothering instincts are getting bred out of them. Uh, but this is what, she's what's called a native breed and, and hasn't had that intense breeding in her line. And hence, uh, she's a good mother. And mothering is a hereditary thing with pigs. So, yeah, we'll probably keep all the females out of this litter. I haven't talked to Marcel about it. We may even keep one of the males. Uh, we'd have to get all new sows. Uh, well, we'd have to check through the, our breeding lines to see who we could breed any of the males here to. Oh, I, I was talking to you. What are you scared for? Were you sleeping? Huh? It's okay, darling. You're all right. It's okay. It's okay. You're all right. Yeah. Yeah, Nini's a little close. That might be part of the problem. You're just the best mama I've ever seen. Yes, you are. You're just a good pig. You are a good pig. I brought her down a, a couple of bananas yesterday as a treat. And she thought those were pretty delicious. The rain's starting to pick up pretty good. Uh, I don't want to have to start yelling. And that's a, that's the bore that we've mostly been using. He had a little wound on his side here. Actually, I think it was a boil. And it erupted and it had uh, maggots in it. So I didn't I didn't film it because I had a I had a feeling YouTube would just block it. Uh, but I, I didn't film me digging the maggots out with my finger. Uh, but it had to be done. And then we we sprayed him up with a, a, a bacterial disinfectant there. That's what the blue uh, that's what the blue stuff is. Yeah, he put up with that. Uh, he put up with me rooting around in that with my finger. As you can still see, it's still an open wound there. He's a pretty good boy. He did his job anyway, huh? Yeah. And I've always brought him down little treats, and uh, this guy here will get pretty big, and uh, the testosterone can make him a bit aggressive. So I've always tried to keep. Uh, try to keep myself on good terms with him. I mean, he's not that huge, but uh, in the wrong mood, he could do some damage to you. Well, you're just not going to let me film that, are you? Well, anyway, I'm going to wrap this one up. Thank you, everyone. Me and my shadow are going to go back up to the house. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe.